Hi, this is Alex from HKN, and today Johan and I will cover Fourier transform. From Fourier series, we saw that we can represent any periodic signal with an infinite sum of sines and cosines, with each different fre frequency getting different amount of Fourier coefficient. But the signal we usually deal with are aperiodic. These signals don't have any period at all. So the Fourier transform allow us to convert these aperiodic signals to frequency domain. First, let's write out what we know from Fourier series. We see that we can represent a function with period of t with an infinite sum of sinusoidal functions e to the j n omega naught t. And the amplitude of the sinusoidal function at each different frequency is 1 over t times the integral of f of t times e to the negative j n omega naught t from negative t over 2 to t over 2. If we rewrite the Fourier series equation, we can simplify them down into two functions, f of t and f of omega. But remember, in Fourier transform, our period is infinity. So that under that condition, the equation we wrote for f of t and f of omega converges to two new functions. And by using these two new equations, we can convert a function from time domain to frequency domain, and we can convert a function in the frequency domain back to time domain. Know that our function has to have a finite integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. Fourier transform does not work on a diverging function. And now I'm going to let Yuhan walk you guys through a couple examples. Hi, this is Yuhan from the HKN. I'm working through one example to help you guys understand how to do this kind of problem in Fourier transform. For example, we are given f of t equals to e to the minus a, t minus t0, u, t minus t0. And if we, we are asked to find the Fourier transform of that f omega, we have two ways to do that. The first way is to solve the integral according to the formula f of omega equals to to infinity of f of t times e to the minus j omega t dt and we plug in f of t here we got the integral from negative infinity to infinity e to the negative a t minus t zero u t minus t zero e to the negative j omega t dt and this function has value of zero when t is less than t zero so we can express this integral as a, another integral from t zero to infinity e to the minus a t minus t zero e to the minus j omega t dt since this integral this integral has value of zero when t is less than t zero and value, and this function has value of one when t is greater than t zero so this one is valid and if we just expand this exponential function out and combine with the exponential term here we got integral from t0 to infinity e to the at times e to the minus t a plus j omega dt and we just solve the integral and plug in numbers we got e to the oh, here should be t0 sorry e to the a t zero times e to the minus t a plus j omega over minus a plus j omega and t is from t zero to infinity 
and if we just plug in t to the infinity minus t t s infinity and another t equals to t zero and solve this part we got e to the a t zero times zero minus since e to negative infinity is zero zero minus negative a plus j omega in the denominator and here should be e to the minus a plus j omega t zero and those two negative terms cancel out and this minus a t zero term is cancelled out cancelled out with this this term so what left is e to the j minus j omega t zero over a plus j omega and I'm introducing another way to do that which is easier by using the time strip property of Fourier transform so in table 7.1 we find that if we got the function let's say g t equals to g omega and so that g t minus t zero equals to g omega times e to the minus j omega zero t and we can see that here g t equals to e to the negative a t u t so that f of t equals to g t minus t zero in this case so by the first first pairs in table 7.2 we can see that capital G of omega here equals to 1 over a plus j omega and we just multiply this term by minus j omega j omega t zero we got f of omega equals to e to the minus j omega t zero over a plus j omega that's exactly this term so sometimes if we use property of Fourier transform a lot of properties is much easier than just walk through the um, walk through the integral mathematically step by step and for part b if you are given g of t equals to 1 over a plus j t and you are asked to find g of omega if we examine this function carefully we can see and comparing it with the result of part what part a we can see that this this term looks very similar to what in part a g omega which was 1 over a plus j omega and the property number 6 in table 7.1 states that if we got f capital F of t and you are asked to find a the Fourier transform of, of it it equals to 2 pi f of negative omega. For this property, what this capital F stands for? To my understanding, this stands for like a function. Very, this function is very similar to a Fourier transform of a basic function. So in this case, this function is very similar to the Fourier transform transform of G, G T in in part A, which is this G T is not this G T. This G T is in part A this equal to e to the minus a t u t so if we use this property we can solve this function we can solve this this part very easily by just plugging the numbers so we can see that 
this gt equals to minus a plus jt so this term should be equal to 2 pi times e to the minus a and we change the t to minus omega times minus omega and u minus omega this is this is not equal this should be its Fourier transform so this equal to f of omega and this equal to 2 pi e to the a omega u negative omega and if we want to examine the correctness of that one by using the inverse Fourier transform integral which is f of t equal to 1 over 2 pi the integral from negative infinity to infinity times f of omega e to the j omega t d omega the only difference here is here's the extra 1 over 2 pi term in front of the integral and there is no minus sign in this component so if we try to solve that by plugging f of omega equal to f of omega in part b we got 1 over 2 pi is equal from negative infinity to infinity times 2 pi e to the a omega u negative omega d omega but we have to add another term is e to the j omega t so this constant cancel out and by using the same trick I used in part one this, this function has value of 1 when omega is negative and value of 0 when omega is positive so this integral became negative infinity to 0 e to the a omega times e to the j omega t d omega and this integral can be solved very easily So this one equal to e to the a plus jt omega over a plus jt and omega from negative infinity to zero and if we plug in omega equal to zero here and omega equal to infinity here and use this term minus this term we got 1 over a plus j t minus if we plug in omega equal to negative infinity here the whole term equal to 0 so minus 0 so it's 1 over a plus j t this is exactly what we are given in part b an important property of Fourier transform in an LTI system is that let's say we have an LTI system with a frequency response of h omega in frequency domain and if we pass in an input f of t, we want to find out what y of t is. A very easy way to perform this operation is to first convert f of t into frequency domain using Fourier transform. And the output y of omega in frequency domain is the product of the input function f of omega and the frequency response h of omega in frequency domain. And once we find y omega in the frequency domain, we can do an inverse transform and convert it back to time domain. And we get our y of t back. A common mistake that students usually make when solving an LTI system problem is that they think that's possible to only convert h omega to h of t in time domain and assume that y of t is the product of f of t in, in h of t. Since the frequency domain, that's how we got our answer. But this is actually not right. We need to use a method called convolution to solve this LTI system in time domain. There are useful tables in the textbook that shows some useful properties of Fourier transform and some common functions that were used for Fourier transforms as well. 
these tables are also online for those of you who are interested in a PDF version. Here is a graphical representation showing the difference between Fourier series and Fourier transform. And notice how that the magnitude of Fourier transform for each frequency is the Fourier coefficient of the Fourier series. And now I'm going to walk you through two examples that utilize these Fourier transform properties. So given this problem, we see that this equation is hard to integrate to. But if we look closely, we realize that this problem uses two Fourier transform properties. One, scaling, and two, time shifting. And if we check the table again, we see that this problem is really similar to one of the equations in the table, that is t times e to the negative at times u of t. And we know the function pair, 1 over parenthesis a plus j omega plus parenthesis square. And by combining the Fourier properties we found and the base Fourier transform pair that we saw in the table, we realized that this problem is just a scaling of 3 and a time shift of 2 of the base Fourier transform pair. Here's another problem that it's hard to integrate to, sinc of t times cosine of 2t. And sinc of x is defined as sine of x over x. And if we look at the sinc function and the problem, and we cross-reference it with the sinc function given in the table, we realize that the Fourier transform pair for the sinc of t is pi rect of omega over 2. And if we look at the table again, we see that any function multiplied by cosine function has a Fourier pair through modulation property. And with those two information given, we now can find the Fourier pair for this specific function.